Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19. We're just going to take our cultivator and go and park it up, and we're going to get our seed drill on, and we're going to plant the very final field there. Then, we're going to have, we have a look in here a minute. So, what we want to do is we want to come down here, and you've got your fruit types right there. Then you've got your growth stages here, and then you've got soil composition over here. So at the moment, soil composition is absolutely fine. They all need fertilizer. They don't need plowing. They don't need lime. And we don't have a weed situation. So we don't have to deal with any of the other bits, but we do need to put some fertilizer on there. Now, you can put fertilizer on any way you like. You no longer have options in this game for one or three layers of fertilizer. It is simply two layers of fertilizer. If you go here onto the help section uh you've got crops you've got improving yield right there to obtain a 65 percent yield bonus you must spread fertilizer twice which is plus 25 percent each time and spread lime every third harvest which is 15 percent now spreading lime is actually quite cool i've done a little bit of that for the time lapse that was up yesterday uh removing bad weeds now, if we see weeds come up, they, I believe, are random. I don't think they come up at a set time. So we've got a weeder that we can use to remove them. And we also need to plow after we've done set crops. So at the moment, we don't need to plow because we haven't done any of those crops. It's the root crops or uh, maize or um, sugarcane. Now, we're not going to be doing sugarcane on this map or highly unlikely that we will. So really, it's kind of the, the root crops and stuff like that that uh, we want to be thinking of. Um, those of you who don't know, there may be a patch for this at some point soon. I'm not quite sure. Um, you know, I said that my cruise control thing wasn't working, right? I pressed cruise control and then it wasn't auto disengaging like it should. Uh, it seems to be related more to my steering wheel than the actual game. I've gone and altered the um, the axis settings in the main settings in the beginning of the game. It's no longer sluggish when I go to press the accelerator or the brake, and it also disengage. Look, I activate the cruise control right there, and then I just put my foot on my accelerator pedal, and it's disengaged the cruise control as it's supposed to, and it's now working absolutely fine. So that was more to do with my um, pedal setup than in uh, than anything to do with the game. So that appears to be a bug that isn't even a bug. So we don't even need to worry about that one. Um, what do I want? I want to look on here. So what crops have we got? So we have fruit types right here. At the moment, we've planted oats in the big field up there, so we can see that one. We've got barley there. We've got wheat over there. So the other... Well, we've got a couple of other crops we could go for. Soybeans there, we could do. If we want to get pigs, we're going to need... This is what I'm thinking about, is whether or not we should get some pigs. I like the idea of getting pigs. We've got horses... And I do like the idea of getting other animals. Uh, now, horses, you need oats. Uh, you raise their fitness level by riding them. Your horse is given a name automatically and you can change it. We will name our horse. I'm going to be using the list of the, the great book of names, the list of named Frith Guardians. I'll be working down through the list. So those of you who've been added later, it will be a little while before your names start appearing in the series because I go through the list sort of in the order that I put them in. And the very first people on there were some of the earliest ones that have supported me, um, either through Patreon or through work in the... Um, through like being an active member of the community, you know, lots of comments and interacting and suggestions and so on and so forth. So food is corn, wheat, barley, canola, sunflower, soybeans, potatoes, and sugar beets. Exactly the same as previously. And then you get the reproduce, they, they reproduce and then you can sell them for profit. So we don't have any change on here. However, we the canola sunflowers and soybeans is one group that we would want in order to be able to produce pigs and we don't have any of those being made yet uh, being grown so i'm thinking soybeans i quite like the idea of that food you've got grass hay silage and tmr total mix ration is best and that is a there we go it tells us right here tmr right there two hay bales one straw bale fill the rest with silage 
in the big mixer right there. So you, it, it's the same, it's the ratios that we're familiar with. We are familiar with this. Um, and there's your symbols right there for hay and for straw. Which I did, I, I did think that was the, the symbol. So we go and look through this way. I completely forgot. We've already got some stuff in storage. So we don't need to worry too much about the stuff that's already in storage for our pigs. We don't have root crops. So maybe we should consider root crops. That is not hay or straw. That there is straw. According to this, hang on, it should tell us what the symbols are. There. Uh, it's not telling us the rest of them. Let's go down here. Miscellaneous icons. No. Seriously? Train, weather forecast. Oh, I can't, right there. There's a whole thing that tells you what the icons are right there if you go to the shop. So icons part two. No. No. Here we go. You've got to look in the production recap section up here. So you've got your production recap. So grains there. That tells you what those are. Those are fairly self-explanatory. Those are fine. Cotton there and sugarcane, fairly self-explanatory. Right. Plain grass. Hay over here is the wiggly line one. So plain grass is the straight lines. And then you've got that one, the little birds are the straw. So if you look back on here, we've got straw right there at 153. And then that at 138 is plain grass. But it's not actually telling us what hay is. There's no, there's nothing there for loose hay. Guessing is because you've got to sell bales of hay, and it doesn't have a set, it doesn't have a price there for bales of hay either. So not quite sure what's going on with that, but we will find out eventually. Um, anyway, we've got various different um, animals there. We've got our horse, which we want to do some more riding on. But it was this bit here, the animals that we were just looking through. Uh, here we go. Cows, slurry, sheep. They still need grass and hay. And then we've got our chickens, which need wheat. So I think what we will do is we will switch this over and we will grow some soybeans anyway. I did think maybe we would grow something different, but no. I think we'll grow soybeans on here. And then we've got a decent mixture of all the different crops and so on that um, we can produce. Let's bring the hired help in on this one. They'll start working down through there, and there's a nice slow use of seed as well. So they're not going to take very long, and they're also, they should have enough seed to be able to do that field. At least that's what I'm hoping. So we're going to run over this way, and we're going to name our horse. And we're also going to take it for a bit of a run around. Um, we're going to consider selling that tractor there and buying another tractor. And getting a tractor fitted out. Now, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to actually open the gates. And we're going to ride this horse out properly. So, Rascal. First up, we want to rename the horse. You look in here and then you go to the horse paddock. And we go to there like that. And then we can click on rename. So, the very first name in my great book of names in the list of um, Frith Guardians is Tyree. Tyree is the very first one. So there is our very first name. And I will just go through the list. As we get new horses, that is what we'll do. Hang on. Why are you... Yeah, it is Tyree. Okay. Now, I'm using my steering wheel for this. That's not working out so well. I should... Yeah, it's because I'm trying to use, like... Um, incremental acceleration using the pedal when it doesn't work like that. You've literally, you've got a choice. The steering is relatively straightforward, but um, the actual controls for the horse, they're a little bit different. So we can go flat out like this. Then we can steer around. So let's, let's go up this way. Turn around a little bit. It doesn't like... Um, steering with the steering wheel, I, I am moving the horse, but it's actually just easier to use the the keys for this. <laughs> it made it up there. That's brilliant. Just pressing and holding the accelerator doesn't make you go faster. You do actually have to press the button once to walk, press it again to 
um, or the accelerator pedal, uh, press it again to start trotting, press it again to go to a canter, and then um, press it again to go to a flat, uh, flat out gallop. So you, you, it is in increments there. You slowly build your way up towards this flat out gallop like this. And you can jump as well. And it appears <laughs> you can jump a very long way. <laughs> Fantastic. But I'm loving this. I'm absolutely loving it. You shouldn't really gallop a horse on the road. I'm not much of a horsey person. I don't know much about horses. I'm not fond of horses either. It's got to be said. Um, and horses know this, so they're not fond of me either. We, we, we kind of have... A, a, my relationship with horses is that we leave each other alone. We both know that we're, be we're both better off if we just leave each other alone and then everything, everybody's happy and everything is fine. So we'll take this, we'll take our horse, actually, is there a way to see if I slow down a minute and stop right there? Daily riding, we're up to 64%, so let's go out this way and take a look at this end. Um, and then once that field has finished planting, I'm going to get rid of the case. Several people have asked me if I can sell the case and get a different tractor. Um, now, those of you... I, I've, the time lapse is all done. I did a FS19 time lapse yesterday for you all. It's, that's all gone up and it was um, it was done. I, I don't really know how successful it's been because I literally just made sure that it went live and now I'm recording this. Um, so this is yesterday. You, you Hopefully, some of you will be watching that time lapse. Um... Those of you who have, well, spoiler alert, okay, I got a John Deere on that one, because I thought, well, I'll get a John Deere on something, and I figured, well, why don't I just get a John Deere on the time lapse, and then that's sort of, a lot of people are going to see it, so I'm not going to go for a, a John Deere at the moment on this series, we might get one a bit later on, but I don't just want to do John Deere, I know that this is like a big thing, having John Deere in the game, because John Deere are known for not giving up their license, right? So it is it is a big thing having a John Deere in the game, or at least officially that the console users can use as well. Um, and yeah, it's absolutely great. But I would also like to have a look at some of the other machinery as well. Now, when we started in FS17, we got a... What did we get? What was one of our first ones we got? It was a um, Valtra, wasn't it? It was that Cow Edition Valtra. So I'd like to get... I don't want John Deere, and I don't want Valtra, because we did, though we did that early, and I got John Deere on a different series. So I'm thinking I would like, I'd quite like to go for either Fent or Deutz or something like that. A lot of people want me to go for Fent. I know there is a huge number of you that really want Fent, because it's, you know, we, we haven't really used Fent very much. Horse Tyree is back in his stable. Oh, the other thing that we need to do is we actually need to give Tyree some food and, uh, you know, water and, and stuff like that. So maybe you ought to do that first. And it would also help if I have this on miles and in dollars because we're here in the US. Uh, hectares, I'm leaving that on hectares because it's just easier. Um, I can, I work in either hectares or acres. Um, I couldn't tell you how many acres is in a hectare, to be honest. I know roughly the size of an acre of field, and I know roughly the size of a hectare of field when I look at them. Um, and that's, that's kind of how I do it. I, I, I don't really know how much one goes into the other. Same as I know how much a litre is, roughly. I know roughly how much a gallon is, but I don't know how many litres is in a gallon. Um, so it's like the, the crossover between the two. I understand both of them, but I don't understand the, the ratios between the two of them. And... Uh, over here, so our daily riding is now up to 100%. So tomorrow, that means that it'll increase. We need to put some oats and some hay in. Water and straw as well. The pen conditions there, and then food right there. So the pen conditions, I'm guessing, helps the condition here. Uh, or maybe the health, I'm not really sure. But we definitely want to get both of those. So if we take this tractor here, I'm going to leave the front weight behind. And maybe we'll bring back more than... I don't know what we're going to bring back, but I'm, I'm going to leave the front weight here anyway. And this tractor, we reset this one to the shop, and all the fuel disappeared. 
So I'm I want to do this again. I do I'm deliberately going to reset this one now to the shop just to see if all the fuel will disappear again. So we want to click on that one right there and then go reset and see if any more fuel disappears from it. This that's kind of what I'm after now is to find out if more no, but it has gone to an empty tank. So I'm assuming that resetting to the shop does actually empty out the tank. Minus 333 fuel costs, it said right there. So I don't know if that's like a penalty. You know, so you've actually got a penalty system for resetting your machinery. Which I actually kind of like. I do, I do quite like that. And it's helpful also that there is a garage right there, okay? There's a garage right there that you can go and use, and you so you can refill with fuel directly opposite the um, the shop right here. And it's sort of yeah, it's I I, I like this. I, I like this idea of a penalty for um, resetting your machines. You you you've got to think carefully about whether or not you're going to reset your machines, and it does encourage you to look at alternatives first. But a tank of fuel is not going to break you, is it? It's absolutely not going to break you. So it's not something that is going to become um, a serious penalty to you as you progress through the game. But it is it is something that could, you know, especially near the beginning, make you think twice about going along and just resetting everything e immediately. Okay, so we can repair that one if we want to. Uh, age, zero days. I don't know what repair is. Condition says right full. So we're just going to go and we're going to sell that one like that. We've finished doing our other stuff. We want a tractor. And I'm thinking of a uh, of fent. Now, we could go all out and we could buy a really big fent. Not something I wanted to do immediately. I'm going to go with medium. The case right there, the 7200 Pro Series is in the medium range. And we've got Massey Ferguson. We've got the Fence 700 Vario. We've got the John Deere 6R. This is the one that I bought in the time lapse. I'm going to leave that one for now. We've got the case there, the Fence. Um, if we go back here, what have we got under large tractors? We've got a big stair, the Terrace CVT there, the, the stayer. That one's made a comeback. We've got the Series 9 there, the Deutz. I actually quite like that. I think that one looks really cool. Um, the Fent 900, and then we've got the 8R, the Fast Track, the Magnum for the case, the Fent 1000 series, and then we've got these tracked Caterpillar vehicles uh, further up, which we will be looking at later on. Right now, though, we want a medium-sized tractor for our medium-sized farm, and we're going to go with the Fent 700 Vario. So that is a uh, $180,000, and... Obviously, we're going to go... I, I do like to um, increase the size of the engine if I can and really get what we... 240 horsepower seems good. We'll go for... Well, twin wheels, whilst it looks epically cool. Uh, I We do have an option for narrows on this one, which is really good because the John Deere I bought in the time lapse, frustratingly, after I bought it, I found out that it doesn't have narrow tyres on it, which is real nuisance because it now means i got to find some other way to be able to deal with the crops. Um, so it looks like I'm going to be backed into a corner on there and I'm going to have to find another tractor. Um, which was not something that I wanted to do. Now this, eh, wide tyres, that's what I want. I want wide tyres on there. And we will get a front loader attachment ready on this one so that we get a front loader as well. And then you've got the wheel brand. You've got Noki in there. Now these are road tyres as far as I know. Road and grass. If you're doing mostly grass work or you're doing a lot of road work, it's this type of tyre that you use. But I have been told that these are also used on snow more than the standard tyres like this. Is that right or are they slightly different than that sort there? I, I don't actually know. But anyway, it's the trail bogs that we want right there. That's what we're going to be going with this. And then you've got a choice between that or that. We'll go for that green there. So we want a total of $220,000. We've got ninety-five. Okay. That means we're going to have to go to the bank. We're going to have to have a chat with the bank manager. Now, we don't have a loan at the moment, so we can take out a bit of a loan. And we want $220,000. i am going to go for a $250,000 loan. I feel that that's uh, adequate. Actually, no. We're going to go for a $200,000 loan. 
uh, repay five. Two hundred thousand dollar loan. That gives me almost three hundred thousand dollars, which is pretty good, I'd say. That's that. It, that's that's a reasonable amount of dollarage. So we go back into here and we go back to our fent over there. So we remember what we had. We had the biggest engine. Yes, we want that one. And then the wheel setup. We've got twins, rears, narrows, wide tires. Just wide tires. I don't want weights to go with it. We've already got a weight back at the farm, which we'll do for now. We'll get another one another time. So that's what we're after. Ah! Oh! Breath, you fool. You absolute fuel. Absolute fuel. Um there and we'll set up narrows wides okay don't go back go by that's the one that we want right there two hundred and twenty one thousand dollars did i buy it now i have there we go that leaves us with seventy three thousand so then if i back out of there and again then we want to go to that section up there and we want to get our front loader if i can find it where are the front oh Chainsaws. Someone wanted me to look at chainsaws. There you go. Same four as we've had previously. Familiar range. But we're not after that right now. Front loaders. Right there. We've got the John Deere. We've got the FZ30. The FZ60. And then all the standard equipment. So we want the FZ60 because we've got a bigger tractor. And we've got a Fent. So we want Olive, Fent, Classic, Fent, Nature Green, John Deere. I love the fact that they have now actually named the colours John Deere Yellow, JCB Yellow, Challenger Yellow, Stara, Fent. We've got the actual colours named, which does make it so much easier to pick your stuff out. So we're going to go on here with the Fent Nature Green, which is what we've got on our tractor. And we're going to buy that loader right there. Yes, for $8,200. Then I'm going to back... Uh, no. I keep thinking that's back because of the arrow. That's, that's the bit that's confusing me. Even though it's written quite clearly right next to it. Back. Um, yeah, I am that slow. So, we're going to want a bucket. But we're also going to want... I'm wondering if we should go with a fork with a grapple. Because we can pick up the bales with the fork with a grapple. But we can also use that one for cleaning. No, can we use that for cleaning? I don't think we can. We may have to come back here and get more stuff later. I think that's what we'll do. Let's go. Let's just go with the bale spike. Because that's what we want. This is why we want this one. So we customise that one. And again, I want the Fent Nature Green. We're going to go for Fent. Everything's going to be matching for Fent. I love that we've got so many colour options on this. It's absolutely brilliant. It's fan schmastic. That's what it is. And we want to look back in here. Because now there's another thing that I want under Animals. And we're not going to worry about these at the moment. So you've got like a forage mixer wagon there. Blend silage hay and straw into TMR. So that one there is 11,893 for making TMR. Then you've got the silo king, which is 16,000. And then... Oh, it's under the self repair. You've got to look under the engines one. So there. And then we've also got animals in here, which is that one there. That is 17,000 litres. Um, hang on. It's the same as this one, isn't it? 16,000. So 17,000, you'd put one straw, say, two bales of hay, and then fill the rest up with silage. Or one straw, one silage, uh, one hay, and fill the rest up with silage. It would work either way. One straw, and you do the same with that. This one here, put a bale of straw and a bale of um, hay. And then you could put a bale of, ha you could put one bale of each if you wanted to. Just exactly one bale of each. But that's going to end up putting you over the limit for the straw, isn't it? I don't know. I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. Right. So we've got straw there that I can spread out. This right here. Straw bales. Use them to cover the ground of a cow stable with straw. Only says cow stable, though. It doesn't say the others. So I don't think we need to worry about that. In which case, we won't. Is there anything else that I want to get while I'm here? It's just because I didn't really want to go back empty. I've got the ability to take more stuff back. Fertilizer. We need to do fertilizer. So we'll have a look in fertilizer technology. This one here does lime. This one does lime. This one only does fertilizer. So I'm going to go with the breadle. No, I'm not. 39. That's 20,000. We go with the coon right there. We'll take that one. And we will buy that at 20,000. Okay. 
Now, it's got 3,200 litres, so we're going to go back from there, and we're going to go back again. And we're going to go into pallets, and we're going to go into big bags right there, and we're going to buy three solid pallets of these. So if I press enter, yes, there. Right, you can't, like, do it super fast, but I think there is a way to buy in bulk. There's certainly a way to buy lime in bulk, which is really good, because lime you use at a redonkulous kind of speed. You really do. One more thing we want. There's one more thing we want, and that is a bale of hay for our horse. So we've got, actually, rather than taking a square bale of hay, wait a minute, square bale straw wheat. Does it specify now the different types of straw? Interesting if it does. Right, I want two of these because I can take two of these on our bale spike. It'll be easier. Okay, so we'll do that. Yes, okay, that's $1,300. Um, we come out of there. Just one second. Does it specify straw? When you harvest wheat, barley, or oat, you can set your harvester to create straw swaths. It can be picked up using a baler. Is it as bedding or as a component? Does it specify anything about having to use different types of straw? Because it specified in the shop that that is wheat straw in there this is the bit this is what i'm intrigued about because you can only buy with we're gonna have to find this out once we get to harvest we've got uh, we've got the three different types of stuff down there at the farm so we should in theory be able to do something with that at least that's what i'm hoping right so we can put that one on there we've got a weight back at the farm so we don't need to worry about that and then we've got it so we can use that as a counterweight on the back and uh, we want to load that one onto there um i didn't mean to shove that one around and this is where we find out that my joystick hasn't yet been properly programmed, which is something that I need to do. I won't be doing that today. Unfortunately, I don't have time, so we will be doing mouse controls for today. And then I will set up my joystick for tomorrow, I'm hoping. At least that's... What, oh, no, I don't want to do that. I want to press R so that I can just start this stuff loading up. We we'll tip that into there, get this back to the farm so that we can get it all loaded and sold. Uh, I will set up my joystick properly so that that um, will then we'll be able to use that on the front loader on the tractor. And I'm hoping it will all work absolutely beautifully. So let's go over here a minute. Oh, not joy. I'm, I'm uh, grabbing hold of the joy. I'm so used to using the joystick. The joystick stays plugged in permanently on my PC. And so it's like right next to me on my workstation. Those of you who have Instagram... You can follow Frithgar on Instagram these days. Frithgar is actually very modern and has joined Instagram. Um, and so posts things on Instagram. Mostly, it's I do occasionally like take a picture of my screen and um, post that up so that people can look at that. And mostly, though, I try to post stuff that's not gaming related, like photos of my dinner. It's amazing how many people actually like photos of my dinner. It's really strange it's very strange for me as well because i never actually expected people that uh, well one i never actually expected to be that person who posts pictures of his dinner um i i, I really didn't I've, I've never sort of been the type of person who would post pictures of his dinner so this it's, it's a very new experience to me but i had instagram and i went and like reserved the name frithgar on it and then I went back and had a look at it one day and found that I've got like 160 followers or did have 160 followers on Instagram. Wow, okay, this is um, a little bit bizarre, but, you know, 160 followers on Instagram for not actually posting anything. Maybe I should put something on here. So I spoke to Sen and I, I just happened to uh, mention to her that, you know, I've got 160 followers on Instagram. I've never posted anything, literally. It says Frithgar, zero posts. I've never done anything. There's 160 people patiently waiting for the day when I'm going to stick a picture on there. And she said, well, you should then. You should go and do it. If that's what they, if that's what they want, then give the people what they want. Just do it. I said, well, I don't know what to post. What am I going to do? I, like, take pictures of my dinner. I spend most of my life sat in front of a computer talking to nobody. I, literally, I'm just sat in a room talking at a screen and hoping that one day people will actually listen to what I'm saying. But I'm not talking to anybody here. There's no one here in front of me. There's no one beside me. I'm just hoping that someone will be listening to this at some point in the future. And she said, well, just like post stuff of your every day. Like you know, the other things that you do. 
Um, and, you know, post a picture of your dinner every now and then. So I've posted pictures of my dinner and everybody loved it. I've posted pictures of my worn out, rather manky looking keyboard. It's, it's just dust, by the way. It's the, all that grubbiness all over my keyboard. It is just dust. Um, lots and lots of dust all over my keyboard, but it is just dust. Let's have a look at this pic. Let's have a look at this tractor a minute. We've, I've been rabbiting on about nonsense again, and I haven't really had a look at my... I'm liking this tractor. This tractor looks really cool. And look at this. Look, look. I put my foot on the accelerator, and he's doing the same. He's actually moving his foot in increments like I am with mine. Okay? That is... Brakes. Yeah, he is... Brake. Now I'm going backwards. It's one thing he doesn't do. But there, he's got the brake and then he's back on the accelerator again. That is fantastic. That is so cool, the way that this is working. I, I love this. I, I really do. I absolutely love this. Okay, well, we'll keep the, um, the fertilizer spinner on the back as counterweight. And we'll run down here. And... Oh, that was the other thing we needed, was water. We've got to be able to get water for our poor horse, because if we don't get water for our horse, he's going to get rather um, hungry, thirsty. There we go. Right, we've got a bale there in for the horse. It's now going to be a very happy, ha very happy chappy. Tyree, right there, is now extremely happy with 1,750 litres of hay. I just put in 4,000 litres of hay. Don't you dare tell me that that is all I've got. I think we need to buy another horse. This is what we need to do. We haven't... We, we won't have exercised another horse. You're supposed to exercise the horses daily as well, by the way. At least I think that's what you're supposed to do. Okay, so we're going to buy another one. Uh, this second horse is going to be called Techline, by the way. And we've got a Pinto, so let's, let's just go with a grey, shall we? Move you over there. And then space confirm. So it, it cost me $300 to move him here. Now we can go and have a look. And here we have our next horse right there. So I can ride this as Falcon at the moment. It's not going to stay as Falcon. This one here is going to... So we want to rename like that. And then... Can I actually do an underscore? Yes, I can. Tech Lime. Right there. There is our new horse. We've got Tech Lime. I'm going to climb off of Tech Lime a minute. Tech Lime is back in stable. So now if I go up to him like this, and there's your name at the bottom of the screen. So we can we can go backwards like that. It's a key. You really do really need, you, you need to use the keys for this. Like the, the whole steering wheel idea sort of works. They do jump. They, they sort of go over. It, it, it would help if you actually like press jump when you did it. Um... We are going to want water. We're going to need to do water next, I think. So we'll do that. And I know what we can do. We can get that fertilizer. We'll, we'll... I'm just thinking, wondering if I should, how much I need to exercise this one. So if I look here, right, we're on 12% at the moment. Does it change? Do we see it change? 13%, 14, keep going. 15. Right, so you can see it ticking up through as we go for a gallop. But it's not like, it's, it's not an immediate thing. So if you want to exercise your horse and you want to really um, like improve its condition and so on, it does take a while. It does actually take you a little while in order to be able to earn this. But we can run around through the crop fields without any detrimental effects to the animals. Anything like that. So you know, we, we've got several different bonuses that we can use. Jump back into the paddock like that and slow down and jump off. Right, Tech Lime is back in stable. So now we've got Tech Lime right here. And I've only got 1,750 litres of hay in here. So the excess that we put in, whereas it used to just kind of be excess that you put in, is no longer excess that you put in. It's, it's like stopped. I wonder if that will happen with the cows as well. Right, it used to be, you know, you put 2,000 litres in, it would, uh, 4,000 in. It would stay at 4,000 until it had sort of dropped all the way down. But right now, we need some oats. We've got 33% on the daily riding on Tech Lime right there. And we'll take, we'll, hang on a minute. That was the other thing I wanted to look at. So right there, 2,7. He's higher because his condition is higher. But then in the morning, this one's condition will hopefully be higher. And then the it'll change the value around. 
So we'll come back over to the tractor a minute. And we'll very quickly drop this bale here into the feeding area. You've got to actually take it off the bale spike as well now. It doesn't just drop, uh, like pull straight off. You've actually got to take it off the bale spike. So this one's got a top speed of 32 miles an hour, whereas this one over here has got a top speed of 26. It's not a big difference, so we can use this one here to do our fertilizing. And safety first, we ought really... Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unhitch this whole thing. I was thinking that we would just unhitch the bale spike, but I'm not. I'm going to... There, switch over to that one and unhitch that one like that and then if i spin round i can go and get i can put that weight on the front and we can start the fertilizing going then once the fertilizer has been done we can then let me just bring that one back through here and hit you on excellent we get the fertilizer going and then we can get that case and we can go off and we can get ourselves a water tanker and we can bring that one back down so that we can get some water in for the horses. We haven't put straw in yet. I will do I will do that. I will put straw in for them. It's just that I want to get this fertilizing done. So let's put you in there. We've got some hired help working. I love hired help. Absolutely love hired help. I make no apologies for using hired help for absolutely every job that I can. Um, I do very occasionally not use hired help, but... Um, most of you know by now that I am a big fan of the hired help and I will use it wherever I can. Because I get, I, I'm basically an undiagnosed ADHD case and I get very bored just sat doing the same thing all the time. So, um, like grass work is interesting enough to keep me entertained, but a lot of jobs like fertilizing and stuff like that, if I can get away with it, I will put the hired help going. Stuff like using small machines in a field, it can look good, and it does look good with the time lapse. But um, I don't necessarily do very much of it myself. Most of it, I put the hired help going, let them carry on, because they're better at it than me. They could do straighter lines than me for a start. So I, I do feel that it's probably a prudent thing to do. So I'm going to drive this one over. So I don't want to reset this one, because it's going to cost us in fuel, isn't it? So we've either got a choice. I can reset this to the shop and do this really quickly, or I can drive it to the shop, do it a little bit slower. I need to get a water tanker and bring that one back. And I think that is everything then, because we got the bales back at the farm, which we can put one of those in for the horses. And we've got um, oats. The oats is the other thing. We've got that in the silo, so we'll be able to put that in for the horse as well. We can put it into the small trailer, and we can move those. Um... The helper has finished a task. We will go and fertilize the rest of the fields as well before we finish up today's episode. Oh, several people have been asking me, what's the flatbed for on the train? And I don't actually know. I'm not going to look at it in this series, but I will look at it in a garage series. That'll either be the one that is out later today or tomorrow. We'll see if we can find out what that flatbed is for, whether you can put machinery on it and strap it down, or whether it's just for pallets, which I suspect it's more likely it's just for pallets, uh, whether there's straps on it. All of those kinds of questions, I'll see if I can answer them in the garage series rather than on this one at the moment. I figure it's just going to be easier if we try and do it through the garage one rather than in here. So we want a water tanker. That one right there is $9,500. And then you've got the milk tanker over here, which can also be used as a water tanker. Uh, you've got one there for a lorry, or you've got one here which could go on the lorry or onto a tractor, I'm assuming. Um... I mean, I'm assuming that there's a way to put that onto a lorry. What I'd really like is I don't know if it's in here, actually. I don't, I don't know if we've got a thing like that. No, it'd be like a like one of these, but, you know, longer with the rigid body with the tanker on the back. And then you have the trailer there on behind it. You do see these in the UK. You do see them going around. But more often, in certainly in the area that I live, you'll see a rigid lorry or truck um with the tanker on the actual truck itself and then towing one of these trailers as well and you'll see the two of them going along um mainly because i think because they're smaller and what a lot of the tankers will do is you've got the small tanker on the lorry that will go down to the farm while this is left in the lay-by and then it's brought back up and then it's um decanted from one into this one 
and then they go off and get some more and they basically keep doing that until both of them are full then they hitch this back on and they trundle off back to the main depot um, it's so that they can get into all the small yards because there are a lot of farms you'd never fit that into you, you literally you just would not be able to get in there with it so i think that's how they do it i don't know this for certain this is speculation on my part but i do believe this is how it works or they you know kind of time it so that those go to the bigger farms where they can fit those in and then the smaller ones go to the small farms first and so on and so forth you, you you kind of get the idea right anyway we want that one there no options on this one so we'll just buy this one exactly as he is yes okay uh there is nothing else i want to buy now so we'll take this one back to the farm Get some water for our horse. I'm pretty sure that the water supply is actually back at the farm and is here. Uh, farm silo. Right? I'm 90% certain that this... Right, I've got the F... Now, people have said about the F1 help. I've already got the F1 help up. There's no indication at the moment that the F1 help is actually there. Getting close, there, you see in the top right, uh, top left, sorry, we've now got controls, and it's come up. So, there's, you won't actually have anything at all up there in the top left-hand corner, even though you've got the F1 up. So, if you want to confirm, you do actually need to go near a vehicle to you know, double-check that you do actually have that um, help up, up there, excuse me. But, I'm all I can do is assume that this is the water pump. I can't do anything else because at the moment I've only got that F1 control up there. Let's, while we're here, see, I've got it right there. Open cover, unload. We can now unload the fertilizer spreaders and the seed drills and everything. So you're not going to be wasting that crop. That is, it's just divine. This is absolutely divine, that is. It's wonderful. We'll bring you in over here like this and we'll put the hired help going again. There we go. That sh that's covering it quite nicely. I'm hoping it'll actually go and do both of those fields. So we'll leave that one going there a second. And I'll get this one. And I'll get this back to the yard. It would appear that he's not going to go and do all of the field. Because it's saying help is completed. I reckon he came back through and did like the other pass on that first field. And then he hasn't turned around and gone and done another pass. At least that's my guess. So let's see if our theory about the water all pans out. I reckon it's this one right over here. We'll go up beside it, and we should, in theory, be able to get a little bit of water on here. So let's go up beside it there, like that. And then I want to press R for R, I'm thinking. R to start filling. Yes, that is absolutely correct. We've got clean water right there. So we'll let that one start filling a second, and I will go to this one over here. And he did. He got just to the end of this one, and then he decided to stop. I'm going to try and clear some of these trees around here, I think. And then we're going to try and make this area bigger. Um, we'll, we'll turn this into one bigger field instead of multiple small fields, just because I think that's going to be quite cool. So we've gone a little bit there. And you can start. We'll do the hired help on this. So he's going to hired help down this side. I reckon we should have moved over a bit. I don't think we're going to quite get... Oh, actually, well, we might. I th I th we, we might be all right with that. Hopefully we will. I think we're probably, after this harvest, that's when we're going to be asked to do lime. That's my guess. I mean, it might be that we're, it's good for lime right from the start, and it allows you to do three full harvests before you've got to go worrying about lime. So if that's the case, it's certainly going to make it a bit easier for us. And no, it doesn't look like we're quite going to get... No, it's going to leave another little strip. I miscalculated there. That was a mistake on my part. But we've now got some water, so let's run this over to the horses. All the way over here. Because even though we've got all of these mod cons here on this farm, we still haven't figured out how to put a pipe from there over to here. Something I would like to see one day is the ability to put pipe work in. I think that would be very cool. Right, uh, no, no. Start over, I am overloading. That's my overload button. Well, that's very weird. It didn't overload with my overload button. It does the... Uh, it does... Oh, I know why. I want to show... I, I actually want to show you this because it might be something that is useful to you later on. So if you look down through here, you can see 
Driving Force GT seems to have mapped itself to all kinds of stuff, which... I'm not really sure why it's mapped itself to everything. I've got my joystick right beside me. That doesn't seem to be mapped to anything at all at the moment. And the game pad there... I've got the... I've got, see, I've got the different game pads and so on. So what I'm really going to be wanting to do is lift front loader tool. If I click on that one there and then I pull back on my joystick, now I've got uh, Logitech Attack 3 on that one. And then that one there, I can lower that one and then uh, lift tool axis 3. It takes a lot of experimentation to figure out which exactly is the right um, lift and lower, which crane arm, which ones and so on. You, you've got to spend quite a while playing around with it in order to be able to get the right ones on there. And it can take quite a while. So anyway... Driving Force GT is the, the ones over on this side. And we've got Dump on Ground. I've got that one. Toggle Cruise Control. i got that one. I've got the Tool Functions 3 and 4 on here. Uh, that's actually... Tool Function 3 is Y for, like, changing the seed and stuff like that. And the other one is Z, which is rarely used. But when it is, it's very useful for me. So which is why I have those and not Tool Functions 1 and 2, which is V and B on the keyboard for lowering and starting up your machinery. Now, um, turn signals, that's not the ones, but dump right there is the one, it was the button that I was actually going to push, uh, was the dump right there. And previously, that was the same one, but then it wanted me to start overloading, which I think is a different one. So let me just see if I can find that a second. I can't find it here. I've got that one right there, which is the dump, which is normally the one to use. Uh, I have, I'm hoping, got some other... But anyway, it used to be that you could go up to there and you could use the dump, but it doesn't seem to do it at the moment. The, the unhitch and all the rest of it that I got set up does seem to work, which is absolutely fine. So, I'm generally speaking, I'm quite happy with what I've got set up at the moment. Uh, what was the next thing that I wanted to do? I've got... Let's switch you off a minute. And we're going to go over to this one right here, as that one's now finished. And my front loader is not currently attached... I just want to put that going on there. And then I want to come over this way. All right, all the way down to here, I think. I press H. Is that going to do it in a single pass? So we've got water in for the horses. And we've also got um, straw in for the horses. No, we haven't. We've got hay in for the horses. And we've got water in for the horses. So we want to put some oats in with horses. So we'll do that in a minute. We get this one started up and we'll run around. We'll dump in a little bit of oats. And then that's our two horses fed and watered. All we've got to do is put a little bit of straw in. And I think it is everything that we want to do with them. So I bring that back in under there like that. We've got wheat. We've got barley. And we've got oats. So let me start filling this one up with a little bit of oats like that. There we go. And then we can go driving over to the horses. And we can tip out. We've got eight tons of oats. Somehow I don't think we're going to be using up a full eight tons of oats. I, I, I don't think we're going to need that much. But it always pays to be prepared. So we are prepared now to use as many oats as we could possibly need. Let's bring you over here. We're going to need to go and do some contracting soon, I think. If we go and do a bit of contracting, I think that might be better. Right, start overloading should be that one. See, that one is the start overloading is dump, right? But start overloading with the water. I pressed the, the dump button on my um, pad and it didn't overload. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Okay, I've used seven tons of oats. How? These horses are, <laughs> These horses are very greedy. Seven tons? Are you kidding me? Hey there, they're, um, oh no, he's not going, he's not, he's going through the hay, it's just that because one bale was like 1,750, we didn't use very much, and now we've got a second one in here, he's using more, that's why. So we've got 7,000 litres of oats in there, and we've got hay in there as well. Food, I don't know how long we leave it in there for, but we'll go and take this back. Actually, I'm just going to move it over to here a minute, and I'm going to stop him right there, and then... We'll worry about putting it away in a minute. Because I want to get this one. That's now spread. So we've got one layer of fertilizer across all of our fields. 
we've got enough uh, fertilizer to easily do another layer. We've also got wide tires on here. So I'm thinking that if we just get one growth stage, we're still safe to drive on the fields. But if we get another one, we've got to use the row crop tires instead of using anything else. I think that's the way it works. If you use the row crops, it doesn't damage it. At least that's what I'm hoping. So, I'd, nope, I don't want to do that. I want to go to the back one and I want to lower you down like that and then unhitch. Right. Then I want to come out to here and I'll lower you down and unhitch. And then I want to swivel round so that I can put the weight on the back of the tractor and we can go and get that front loader over there. We can put that one on. And we can also, because I did just map my um, joystick. So I'm hoping it's mapped onto the front loader properly and that I can actually use it for this. We'll see. We'll soon find out. Right, we put the stole on there. Let's see then if I've got this right. I should be able to pull back. Yes, that works absolutely fine. And then crowd and tip. Okay, that's perfect. The controls are smooth. They work well. It's comfortable to use. Excellent. The only thing I can't do is test whether or not the, um, the grabs work and the extension on the telescopic boom is set right. But uh, again, that, that comes later. That's one of the things. With a game like this, it takes a while to get everything set up. I, I know I spent the best part of a month the last time round setting everything up so that it was to my liking. Because you, you set it and you think, oh, that seems all right. But then you play for a few hours and then you tweak it a bit. And then you play for another few hours, you tweak it again. And it does take time to make sure that you get everything absolutely right. Once you do get it right, then it's there to stay. And you've got those settings all carefully saved right up to the point where you've got to wipe your game or something like that. And then you've got the heartbreaking period of time where you've got to set everything back up again. Right. I've put straw in those two sections and it's not letting me put straw in. It's asking for straw. So how do we put straw in? Have I got to put the required straw for clean bedding, water and food to stay healthy. Periodically, they need to be brushed and cleaned. How do you brush and clean the horses? Right, I, hang on. I'm going to press F1. Uh, oh, hang on. Right, so we can ride tech lime and we can clean. It's clean. Okay, all I'm doing is pressing and holding the button so that I can clean Tyree here. Let's go around the back. Now, it's it's, it's all done. He's, he's now done. I, this is another reason I don't like horses. Those there, when you walk... You see people. They know horses. They walk around behind the horse over here, right? You're lining yourself up for a prime shot right there. Yeah? Kabam! Two hooves in the chest and you're sailing backwards. But you, people walk around horses all the time, like it's a perfectly normal, legitimate thing to do. Are you out of your minds? That that thing, that thing, the, the, these things are killers, right? Look at look at him. Look, look at the demonic glare in his eye. He's just he's just waiting for his chance. That's all he's that's all he's doing. He's just waiting for the chance to take me down. Animal dialogue. So we're not going to get anything from there. So I want to go on round a little bit more. And we'll see if this has actually got to go into this one. I'm assuming, though, that the straw goes into... It doesn't go in there. Maybe if I bring it closer. Nope. Right, it looks like maybe we don't put straw in like this. And that we, in fact, have to put straw in differently. We're not going to be putting that into the water, are we? So it would make sense that the straw goes in here. So what's in this one? Right, I'm looking here. Change to cruise control. Attach, honk, select tool. It's not giving me anything. I'm not getting anything there. I reckon that what we've got to do... I mean, I can try dropping the bale into the paddock, but again, I don't think that's going to work, and then I'm not going to be able to get that bale out again. I think that we've got to bring the straw over, and we've got to use, like, a bale machine thing to do it. Rather than anything else, that's my theory on this subject. Let's go and have a look and see if the help tells us anything. Horse is right there. Give it a name automatically. Raise their fitness. Uh, production recap. 
straw. You can own up to 16 horses. The higher the fitness level, the higher the value. And then you just got to take them out and ride them and so on. But it doesn't say how to put the straw in for the horses. So I'm thinking that we may have to go and get a um, a thingy what to go and get the horse to... You know, the, the straw blower thing. We've actually got to take it from here and we've got to blow the straw in. Because this is the only box here that doesn't have, like, a thing. Yeah, the, the uh, we've got an animal dialogue one over there. But this is the only one that doesn't have a thing. But it, just dropping the bale in here doesn't seem to work. So I guess that we've got to put loose straw in here um, using the same one that you've got to use for the cows. This is my guess. But anyway, we'll have to look at that in our next episode. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.